Hey, what's up guys? This video is for anyone who just graduated high school or welding school and wants to be a rig welder or a pipeline welder. How do I rig up a truck? Where should I work? How do I even start? I'm gonna answer all those questions or anything similar in this video today. Stick around to the end of this video and I'll share with you my list of essential tools needed to start as a rig welder. Before we get started, make sure and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. If you're new here or you don't already know my story, I'll give you a little background. I'm a pipeline welder now and have been for about seven years, but I was a rig welder before I was a pipeline welder. Before that, I worked in a shop for three years right out of high school. But being a rig welder or a pipeline welder were my big goals that I wanted to do for a living whenever I got started. So you just graduated high school. Now what? I get this question a lot and honestly it took me a minute to nail down some tangible things to, to answer these kinds of questions with. But I sat back and I thought about it and I really just, I didn't overthink it. I, I graduated high school and I went and got a welding job. Now mind you, I did go to a Votec my junior and senior year of high school, so that helped with my welding experience, so I was able to go get a welding job, but the job I got didn't require much experience and it didn't pay very much, you know, it was, it was the kind of job I could get and kind of learn along the way. And from there, I just worked my way up. Some of you might be asking, what if I don't have any welding experience, what do I do uh, to get on the pipeline or even become a rig welder? You know, maybe you're out of school and you don't have the option of going to a school or, or anything like that, or maybe you don't wanna spend the money or don't have the money to spend. This is where I would suggest getting any kind of construction job, whether that be a shop or out in the field where there's welders on that job, you know, building bridges, they got welders. Like any shop job, they might need just laborers or guys that can do anything, you know, just like a, not trade work, but just like a, a labor. That's the only term I know how to use, but hire in as a labor and get to know the welders on that job and ask questions. Let them know that you're interested in welding and that's what you wanna do for a living. A lot of guys I know started this same way, either as a laborer or just got a welding job right out of high school like I did. If what you wanna do specifically is pipeline and maybe you have the opportunity to be a helper on the pipeline, but not a welder, I would advise taking that opportunity to be a helper just because it's like your leg in on being a, a pipeline welder. Real good place to start. I myself never helped, but I went to Votech in high school for welding and right out of high school, I got a very low paying welding job. But that low paying welding job gained me so much experience. The experience was invaluable and the connections I made, it was a uh, steel supply shop is what it was, but they had a custom fabrication area in the back that had a brake press, a burn table, a shear and MIG welders and everything like that. My whole point being, it was a steel shop so rig welders would actually come in there to buy material and I was able to meet some of them rig welders. So the connections and the experience, invaluable from working at this low paying job. So to round off that first tip, get a welding job, any kind of welding job, no matter what the pay, or a construction job that entails a little bit of welding here and there where you can actually be in reach within somebody that has experience of welding. The second thing I advise is to be steady, be reliable, and get experience. Once you get that first job, keep it. The last thing you want to be associated with your name is a poor work ethic or being flaky. Really show lots of interest on this job, you know, dive in and soak up all the experience you can. Get experience with different types of welding if you can. Focus on just getting welding experience in general. Focus on your fabrication skills, reading the tape, squaring stuff up, and just, just really focus on learning anything and everything you can about building things with metal. This is gonna help you long-term being a welder, whether you pipeline or, or you don't pipeline. Just get all the experience you can with, with building things. I talk about that a lot also, is being a welder first, not just a pipeline welder. Being a welder first is gonna help you have a career for long-term, not just focusing on wanting to weld on pipe, not knowing anything else about how metal works or building anything out of metal. The third thing you can start doing is building your rig truck. Once you nail down this job, you've had the job for a while, you're getting a steady paycheck, utilize this steady paycheck to start putting together your rig truck. It may take a while, but you can do it. Prioritize your investments. A truck would be the first thing I would advise getting, like a dually, a one-ton dually. You gotta have a vehicle to travel back and forth to work anyway, so you might as well be driving something and paying on something that you're working towards long-term. I do suggest a used pickup just for the sake of 
less overhead. Next would be a weld machine. We'll link a video to what machine I suggest to use for your first one in the description or in one of these corners. And then you can get some tools along the way also. You don't have to have a welding bed just to start out. You can definitely do what we call bathtub it or tub it at first. Just put everything in the back of a regular bed at first. Uh, that's perfectly fine. What about the money or good credit to get a loan at your age, at being 18? What about all this stuff? We'll talk about loans and credit here in a minute. As you get your rig close to being done and you've got enough tools that you can feel like you can start taking on what I call side work, you can start doing such thing. Just work outside of your normal day job that you have. Uh, that's what I did on the weekends, after work, things like this. It'll help speed things along financially and uh, get the ball rolling. It'll take a lot of hard work and it'll take away from your personal time. So like having a family, you know, might be kind of hard to kind of find that family life and work life balance, but it's a good idea and will get you rolling doing rig welding type jobs. I did things like pipe fence for some farmers and cattle companies and stuff, just random maintenance on their fence, uh, repairing implements, I mean just anything and everything I could get my hands on, I was available to the people that needed mobile welding as much as I could. You can put your number on the side of your truck, advertise for free on social media, and don't forget the old fashioned word of mouth. That is still the best authentic way to grow a business anyway, in my personal opinion. Good quality work makes its way around the coffee shop. If you want to do mobile welding, this is how I would start the business. I would start it as a side business. And if you want to do something else, it just helps you get the money quicker, helps you get more experience, and honestly, it just helps you have the hustle that you're going to need to make it anyway as a rig welder, whether that's pipeline or anything else. Okay, real quick, let me know in the comments, are you wanting to be a rig welder or a pipeline welder? Drop it in the comments. Keep in mind, the comments isn't a bad place to start your network. The fourth thing I want to talk about is finances, loans. What about loans? The first thing I advise is don't get in a bunch of debt. That's the number one thing that's going to help you long term to stay less stressed when it comes to finances and money. If you need to utilize loans, that's okay, but try to only have one at a time. And like I said earlier, this steady job that you will get right out of high school is only going to help you with your credit and getting a loan to begin with. One of the things you got to do to get a loan is show that you have a steady job. And pipeline isn't always the best for that anyway. So by having this steady job, you can show the bank that you've got a steady job, you got a steady paycheck, and they will loan you money to go buy a $10,000 truck or a, you know, a $5,000 weld machine or whatever it is that you're investing in. You might need a co-signer at first, because again, you may not have any credit, so you might have to have your parents or somebody older uh, co-sign for your first truck or whatever it is if you've never had a loan. So be willing to get help if you need to. When and if you do get a loan on something, make sure and keep your budget tight and pay as much as you can on the loan every month. The bad thing about loans is they charge interest, so the more you pay every month towards your principal, the better off you are in the long run. You could also go another route. You could take a loan out on the truck, but then at first pay pay the minimum amount every month while you're saving your money to pay cash for a well machine or some tools and things like that. So, I mean, you can kind of go about it a couple of different ways, but those are just a couple of ideas. The best financial advice I can give you is to not overextend yourself. A good rule of thumb is to never have so many bills that a regular job, as in like a job at the house, like not pipeline money, but a job at the house can't cover. Like how much you, how much ever you make at a regular job, whether it be three to five hundred dollars a week, base your budget off of that. Keep it that way for as long as you can. This will just make your career as a rig welder, especially for the first few years, go a lot easier with less stress. Growing up, my dad always used to say, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, maybe not the best parenting advice. It's a good thing this isn't a parenting advice channel. So I'm telling you right now, do as I say, not as I do. I've made a lot of financial mistakes and spent years paying off a lot of debt. Don't do that to yourself. If you have specific financial questions, message me or drop them in the comments. I'm going to try to start talking about it more often because I think it's a very important conversation to have. Becoming a rig welder working for yourself. If you want to do mobile rig welding, like I mentioned before, start it as a side business and keep the day job. This helps with financial stability 
and it'll also help you with investments that you need to make early on in your business. This means you're a business owner and you'll have to act like one, especially if you're young. People are already gonna doubt you. Socialize in places your customers hang out. The coffee shop. Use social media to your advantage. Dress for the job you want, not for the job you have. Be well-spoken, as in be respectful, and have professional things like invoices, so on and so on. Read business books or listen to podcasts. It's important that you learn the ins and outs to remain successful. You have to be more than a welder and all the logistics can be overwhelming. I would also suggest you niche. If you haven't heard the saying, riches are in the niches, I'm happy to share this advice with you. Niching means focusing on one thing. Say pipe fence, for instance. It doesn't mean this is all that you'll ever do, but there are many benefits to niching when first starting your business. For one, you can get really good at it and be the go-to guy in your area. It means you will know how to do it best and be most efficient. It also means you need a focused set of tools instead of tools just to do any job. And it's likely you'll be getting paid more than anyone else doing this specific thing. Sure, some won't pay premium price, but many will. This might go against what a lot of mobile rig welders suggest, but if I could go back in time, this is what I would suggest to myself. Find something you like to do and that you're good at. Make it your bread and butter. And after a while, you can start to branch out. You can also take those other jobs as you go, but you don't have to advertise that you do it all. You're liable to run yourself ragged doing cheap work for little money. Create and provide quality service, not a discount business. Getting on the pipeline. If you're pipeline bound after getting your truck, or maybe before, you're likely to be very antsy to get out there on the pipeline. Stay patient. If you have the chance to side in as a helper, I always suggest that for sure. I'll link some videos below on why I think it's a good idea and how to get your first job. You need to know that this step is a process and most likely it's not gonna happen fast or overnight and it won't be exactly like anyone else's. Location could play a role also. I get asked sometimes if I think people should move to a location where there's more work going on. I never know quite how to answer that. Fortunately for me, I'm from Oklahoma and there's quite a bit of oil field work in and around Oklahoma. So if you live somewhere where there's not a lot of work, it may be beneficial to move somewhere where there's more oil field work. If it was me and I was gonna do that, I'd probably go ahead and buy a camper, move, and live in it. That way you're mobile, you're not tied down, and it's cheaper than renting. Move somewhere and focus on getting a local job and start building your network or have a nest egg and just hustle all you can and go around and start hitting up yards, you know, pipeline yards or oil field yards or, or whatever. The more authentic way would be getting a local job just to get set in in that area and start building relationships. The other is more risky and seems more desperate, but it could work. Be smart about the time of year, the location, and be realistic on the timeline. Stay in and around welding work, network, and be ready to go. You'll get there sooner or later. All right, I've made an essential tools list just for you. I've got a lot of feedback on these tools list and the other lists that I tell people about. It's helped a lot of people know where to start and it's saved them money. You can get yours in the top link of the description. Just drop me your name and your email and I'll email it over to you. Before you go, make sure to like the video if you liked it. Answer the question of the day, which is, which do you wanna be, a rig welder or a pipeline welder? Subscribe to see more videos like this one. And if you wanna be notified when I post a new video, make sure and ring that bell. My advice for the week is, when you have some time, get out a piece of paper and answer this question. What is your definition of success? Many people chase other people's success or what society tells us to have. Make sure you're defining this for yourself and working towards it. That's how you find true success and happiness. If you just graduated, congrats. You have lots of time to figure this all out. Try, fail, and work hard. I'm excited to see where you go from here. Remember, learn something every day, and we will see you next Friday.